So now you have a little taste of what CSS does. And if you remember the reason I wanted to introduce CSS at this point in the series was to further illustrate uh, some of the HTML tags that we're going to be discussing. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and change the selector on the CSS rule. We're going to go ahead and change this to div instead. So now we're not specifically affecting the paragraph, but we are still affecting the paragraph. And that may sound confusing, but that is why I brought up the, the DOM or the document object model previously because we're actually affecting everything within the div. So that includes the div and its child elements. So the div is going to have a background color of black, but the text within the div in the paragraph tag and the list items is going to have that kind of gross yellow color. So let's go ahead and save this. Take a look in the browser. And there you go. And again, a div is a block level element, so it's going to go all the way across the page unless specified. So before we move on, let's go ahead and change these colors to be a little more digestible. So um, we're going to go ahead and make the text color a dark gray and the background color a very, very light gray. And if you're not familiar with these color codes, we're going to talk about that when we get into CSS. But for example purposes, this is what we're going to stick with here. Go ahead and refresh the page. So there we go. So you've seen what a div allows us to do. It does in fact act like a container. Everything within the div can be manipulated, almost like a group. So you can kind of think of it as a div as like a grouping, if that helps you. So to see what else we can do with divs, let's go ahead and create another div underneath here. So I'll create the div tag, and we'll create another paragraph. And just for fun, we'll go ahead and put something else in here, and we'll make a block quote. Which, if you remember, this will just simply indent what we place in here. So, before we preview this, you may or may not have already figured out what's going to happen here. Because in the CSS we specified that div tags will have these two particular properties, that means that both of these divs are going to have the background color and the color property applied to it. So let's go ahead and save and take a look at this. Now when we were building a table earlier, we had noticed that the text within the cell was just felt really squished in or tight uh, and that's because we didn't have any padding on the cell and padding is another property that we can add using CSS and just like I explained with the tables padding is within the element it's a way to add space or, or some buffer uh, between the edge of the element that we're applying it to and what is within it if we wanted to add space between elements, we would use what's called margin. So underneath this background color property, we're going to go ahead and enter, and we're going to say padding. And let's just say 20 pixels. And this is going to put 20 pixels all the way around the divs. So there's going to be 20 pixels between the edge of the div and the text within it. And we'll be able to see this because padding allows for more background color to show through. Whereas if we were to use margin, we wouldn't see any more background color, we just have more space between the two divs. So let's go ahead and save this and take a look. So there we go, now we have some padding. But unexpectedly, we've lost that space between the two divs. And this is where things can get a little annoying um, if, you, if you're not understanding what's going on. And it can have us web developers scratching our head for a while. If we flip back to our CSS here, let's go ahead and we'll take out this padding and save it. 
and take a look in the browser again. So we lost our padding, but yet we gained this space here. Now the reason we have this space here has nothing to do with the divs themselves, because again, like I said, they really don't have any properties, which is why there's no padding. However, the tags within these divs do have those properties. And what we're actually seeing here is kind of an overlap of the unordered list tag and the paragraph tag below. So the list here and this paragraph tag are what's creating this buffer between the two because they have a default padding. So when we applied that extra padding to the divs, it gave the illusion that we had lost this space, but the space was actually not supposed to be there to begin with. So let's flip back here. I'm going to put that padding back in and we'll save it and we'll take a look. There you go. So in order to get that space back, let's go ahead and add some margin. And we'll go ahead and just do 10 pixels. And we'll save this. And what this is going to do, just like the padding, is going to add 10 pixel margin all the way around each one of these divs. Yet the difference is, is that this spacing is going to come outside of the div. So it's going to push these divs and everything in it apart from each other. Let's go ahead and refresh. There you go. Now we have some space. Let me go ahead and save this as another document, like this example 9. 